Where to begin? Do you know that last Friday, there was an in-ring segment with Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair, and the next day, they began getting pulled from live events. Unforeseen circumstances, it was said. Uh, that's interesting. Both in the ring together, unforeseen circumstances. Then they missed another house show. And of course, WWE never announces anything. They're just not there due to unforeseen circumstances. And of course, everyone was thinking maybe it was COVID. Obviously, that's what they would think because they got pulled from shows. Two of them that were in the ring together get pulled from weekend events. So then I think it was on a Tuesday or Wednesday... Word got out that they had been cleared. And I thought, huh, that's interesting. They were cleared, which is an interesting term, by the way, because cleared means they were uncleared. They were both uncleared together. So that raises some red flags. Then they both get cleared, and I'm looking at the timing. They were in the ring together Friday. They start missing shows Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. They're cleared five days later. That's weird. So I did a I did a segment on it here on this program. I talked about how interesting that was, and I I made the comment that uh, yes, if you if you are vaccinated, uh, you can still get COVID. You can get a breakthrough infection, uh, and usually in most cases, unless you're old or immunocompromised. In most breakthrough cases, you have mild symptoms, and the infection clears your body quicker. So I thought, you know what? I mean, it's possible that they got a breakthrough infection, and, you know, they ended up getting cleared five days later. They passed a test. But that's weird, I noted. Oh, man, did I get it. Oh, uh, man, did I get it on that one. Well, here we are. Friday comes. And word is that, well, it looks like actually maybe Sasha isn't going to be at at the uh, pay-per-view. And then the word was, well, we'll find out whether or not she shows up on on the show tonight. We'll see what they end up doing. Well, you know, she wasn't on the show. Bianca was on the show. They're still promoting the Sasha match at SummerSlam. They randomly have Bianca have a match with Carmella. And a match with Zelina Vega. There's no explanation for why she has to wrestle twice on one show. She beats both of them. They're still promoting the Sasha Banks match for the next day. So the next day comes. And, you know, the word is, it doesn't look like Sasha's going to be on the show, but there's no mention from WWE. So we the show starts. And I'm watching this show. And it was actually doubly weird because... Nakamura and Boogs start making their entrance, and Boogs is playing his song, and Nakamura is doing his entrance. And I'm like, what's this bloke coming to the ring? I didn't know this guy had a match. So I'm watching. He gets in the ring, and I'm waiting to hear who his opponent is. And also they cut away for a video package for Sasha and Bianca. I was like, what? So they just did an entrance for Nakamura for no reason, for those of you wondering. There was no match. So, they do this video package, and I'm watching this video package for Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks, and I'm like, my God, I guess she is on the show. All that talk, and she's on the show after all. They play Bianca's music. Bianca comes down to the ring, and also the ring announcer goes, Sasha Banks is unable to compete tonight. She is, she is, uh, I forget the term they used. She, she could not, uh, medically, whatever, she can't compete. She could not get cleared to compete tonight. I was like, whoa, Are you, you got to be kidding me. Fans start booing. I was like, bro, we knew this a week ago. So he, the guy's in the ring. Bianca's in the ring, sad face on, everything like that. And the ring announcer goes, well, you know, her opponent tonight's going to be Carmella. I was like, dude, I just saw her beat Carmella last night. Like I know it's it's just a it's just an angle or whatever, but could you make this company look any more incompetent? That the only woman in storyline that you could come up with to face Bianca is a woman she beat with her finish in three minutes the night before on SmackDown. So Carmella comes out, and then all of a sudden Becky Lynch's music hits. Everyone goes, "Oh my God, Becky Lynch is here!" Becky Lynch makes a return. Everyone's all excited and happy. Becky Lynch gets in the ring, and she looks at Bianca Belair. Uh, Fans are cheering their heads off. 
And Becky Lynch grabs the mic and she says, let's go in there and let's let's tear the house down for these fans. I'm like, my God, they're going to do a match. They're actually going to do a match. Becky says, let's tear the house down. Well, they ring the bell and Becky punches her and hits one move and pins her to win the title. I went, oh, my God. Yes, it was cool that Becky made a surprise return. Yes, the fans were happy. But if you're if you as a fan can't think of a hundred better ways that they could have done this, bro, I don't know what to tell you. Is this ever the show for you? Like knock yourselves out. They buried Bianca Belair. They I can't even say the word on national radio. They effed you on Sasha Banks for a week. They knew she wasn't going to be there. I was just, this was such classic. And this is the day after, by the way, that CM Punk debuted to like the biggest pop most people have ever seen in the history of pro wrestling. So anyway, she's back. She's the champion. I'm not even sure if she can do like a long match right now because originally she wasn't coming back for like two more months. And the fact that they did one move tells me she's probably not ready to do a long match yet. So now she's a champion who can't do long matches. And I'm sure someone's going to hear this and go, oh, we needed Becky to go nine minutes on SmackDown on Friday night. I guess we'll see what happens there. So anyway, that was the uh, that was the Becky Lynch return. I mean, it was a, it was a, let me put it this way. It was a cool moment. It could have been so much cooler. And they could have done it without screwing you, the fans, and Bianca Belair. But they didn't. This is what they came up with. Because it's WWE. What was it? SummerSlam 88 when Honky Tonk Man was the Intercontinental Champion and he was supposed to face, I think it was Brutus the Barber Beefcake, but then Beefcake got laid out and injured so they had to have a replacement. And then the music hit of the Ultimate Warrior and he came down and he demolished the Honky Tonk Man. You know why that worked, Brian? You know why that worked? Because the Honky Tonk Man was a hated heel. That's why that worked. You know who's not? Bianca Belair. And bottom line is, she has got a very strong, very passionate fan base. And they cut their nose off to spite their face with this one to get the pop. On a night when you were already bringing back Brock Lesnar. Like, I didn't think they'd have the cojones to bring back Becky Lynch because you didn't have to. Save her for the fall season for TV purposes and draft purposes. Save her for something down the line. Save her for that. You have other people you can build up. You have a whole roster of people you don't use. Wait. Especially because you're bringing back Brock. But they don't do that. Okay, fine. The way I would have brought her back, and I know everybody's got their own way of fantasy booking this, is just really simple. Why do the match on Friday when you knew this was coming for eight days? Either build up something else, build up another match. that would People would still boo. They'd still feel disappointed. But you know what? You have to go to that crappy finish. Now they're really booing because Zelina Vega ran out and Carmella ran out. Whatever it's going to be, whatever combination you had. And then Becky comes out and saves the day. What's wrong with that? And then you actually have her standing there with Bianca, who people are already holding on a pedestal like a lot of people held Sasha on a pedestal, like people held Becky on the pedestal. And then you pull Dude, that. You pull may that I out, say you take, something? No, hold on. You pull that out and you take that away from them. And then you do the exact same thing to people that you did with Becky. But the problem is, I don't think that, that she's going to be able to respond in the same way that Becky did. And that bothers me. We'll see what happens here. But you had a way for them to stand together and have your biggest star in the company, men or women, arguably, Becky Lynch, biggest star in the company, to stand there with somebody who, you know what, can use a little bit more. Why not have them be equals? Why did that have to happen? Ridiculous to me. Listen. Do you guys know why Becky Lynch is the man? Do you know what started all of this? What started all of this was, ironically, a SummerSlam a couple of years ago where she was beloved by the fans and they wanted to see her win a match at SummerSlam and the company screwed her in the eyes of the fans 
And then, of course, you guys all remember what they tried to turn her heel, the fans, blah, 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 blah. But the point is, it was because she, in the eyes of the fans, was wronged at a SummerSlam. And now here we are at SummerSlam, Mm -hmm. and she goes in the ring with Bianca Belair, who ended up being wronged by Becky Lynch incredible irony, which I'm sure nobody there saw. I mean, to them it was all, oh, we'll give them the big surprise of Becky, and we'll give her the championship, and everybody's going to cheer because they were surprised, which of course, you know, with this audience, I'm sure, you know, if you're a hardcore WWE fan, 90% of them are probably angry and typing something on Twitter about how I'm paid by AEW, but if you as a fan of WWE really sit down and think about what they did last night, you will realize that there were a million ways they could have done the same thing better without burying Bianca Belair and screwing you as a paying fan. Back in a moment, Observer Live. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.